leaders, and of course, the introduction of our new music director. May all those things bring you praise and glory, and may none of the unforeseen hoops we have to jump through give us any consternation, but full faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen.
start? Well, good morning. Thanks and praise be to God. Are you sure you're ready to worship? That's, that's what I get. Let's try that again, please, church. Good morning. Thanks and praise be to God. That's a little, I mean, that's better. We're getting there. We're getting there. If a hallelujah slips out or an amen, you know, roll with it. We're going to turn our attention here to the communion table, of course. I'm going to light the Christ candle on this 37th Sunday in Pentecost or ordinary time. I lose track in the summer, but we are in a season of refreshment and replenishing our body and soul. So if you came here today feeling tired, feeling weary, I have good news. There are plenty of opportunities for you to volunteer at church, which is very invigorating. But also, Nick, you're the only one I think that got that. But also, I come with words of encouragement that we will refresh our body and soul today. So I'm dressed a little bit down because the question is, is there a difference between like vacation and fun and rest, refreshment with the Lord? That's the question we're going to ask ourselves all week. But to do that, we have to be prepared to accept this invitation as the light of Jesus Christ in the world. I pour the waters of baptism and I share with you exciting news. Three people last week raised their hand to get baptized. Yeah, and it was so overwhelming. We are excited about that. We'll be talking with them. I'll be examining them. And here's kind of the coolest part. They are all over 10 and under 14. Yeah, so that means they made a choice at that age to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And it is exciting. So, so that is why, as you say, he offers an invitation every week. You never know. You never know when someone is going to say, yes, this is my moment. We have our congregational meeting today. Yeah. Ah, you know, you know how to behave. That's good. We're going to elect our leaders. And in true Chicago fashion, we had some last minute people say yes to serving. So I'm very excited about that. I have to go rewrite some ballots, but, you know, I'll do that during the sermon. So it shouldn't be a problem. Um, we're also going to introduce our new music director, James Brownold, today officially. Yeah. So. Hopefully that wasn't the good applause. That was the practice one. So because we're going to do it officially later in the service. OK, and we are, of course, going to worship our Lord. So I invite you to open your hearts and your minds to the spiritual gifts that God has given you. We're going to hear a word from one of our elders here about the spiritual gift of mercy and what a blessing it is. Service. I'm sorry, service. Next week is mercy service. Thank you, Scott. No, that's just the same. Right. Morning, everybody. For those who don't know me, I am Scott Lowry. So based upon my spiritual gift survey, my number one gift is to serve. Now, I've never served in the military. Occasionally, I serve food. I am not skilled at serving a tennis ball, and I will never serve a subpoena. The definition of service that applies to me is to perform duties or services for others or organizations. And it, I serve the brotherhood of man, also known as God's children. As I reflected uh, during the preparation of these words, I recognize that God has bestowed upon me a servant's heart, along with a variety of other attributes that ensures his servant will be serving his family for many years to come. Again, upon reflection, I recognize my servant's heart is present and active every day in both my personal and professional life. But I also recognize I do not, um, I do not possess many of the spiritual gifts described in the survey. Administration, no, that's not for me. Evangelism, I could do that quietly and one-on-one. -on -one. Teaching, I could do that but, and probably would be good at it, but I don't have the confidence uh, that I should. So my suggestion is, is this, is uh, take the uh, spiritual survey, if you haven't done so already, and if something grabs your interest, you grab it, bring it forward, let that sunshine or let that light shine and use it as you seek to serve others through the Holy Spirit.
Great witness, Scott. Thank you. We are called by our siblings across the pond in the birthplace of Presbyterianism to join in worship with all humanity and the Holy Spirit. Answer the call of faith. May God be among us throughout this day. May Christ Jesus be beside us throughout this day. May it be so. May the Spirit be within us throughout this day. May it be so. May we, God's people, be at one with all the saints and live in harmony with the blessed three, to whom be praise and glory forever. May it be so. Amen. Sometimes our confession is quite simple. We ask God to deliver us from that which separates our souls from God's spirit. Pray with me, siblings, and let us return together as one. These are the words from Red for Tomorrow, a Kenyan prayer. From the cowardice that dare not face new truths, Liberty. from the laziness, that is contented with half-truths, the arrogance that thinks it's known all truth, from all things that exalt my soul, from being united with yours, good Lord, deliver me. Amen. Please take a moment and open yourselves to Jesus' cleansing love in silent prayer. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. While we wonder if, when, or how we might be delivered, the good news, nevertheless, remains this. We already have been. Listen to these words from Galatians 1, 11 to 14, and remember God's grace. May you be made strong with the strength that comes from God's glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share the inheritance of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of the darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Friends, believe the good news. What joy we know in knowing God. Sing your promise with me together. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Number one in the green hymnal. Be raised by the Spirit if you're able and join in song. Thank <laughs> you. 
Please be seated, except if you're a youth and you'd like to come forward, please sit on the step here. Yes. Yes. How am I going to do this? I want you to uh, take an imagination with me. Okay. That is good. Okay. Um. <laughs> imagine. Close your eyes and imagine. The sun is beating down on you, and you're walking in a hot, hot desert. Now you have to run. Your Feet are boiling hot and sweat is dripping down you. <laughs> and you're just saying, and your mouths are dry. Wouldn't you like something refreshing? Open your eyes. Are you doing good? Who said something? Who said that? Who said water? Somebody say water? You can open your eyes. You're sweaty. <laughs> what would you like to have? <laughs> Who said it first? All right, not over. Take it. Not good. Oh, what about the rest? <laughs> should do. You gonna share that with them? Can you refresh them? Can you tell them for refreshing one? This chance. Say this is a chance for refreshing water. All right. There you go. So come on up one at a time and take your cup and I'll give you some refreshing water. You can sit down. Shut up, everybody. I think I have just enough. But let's start wanting. If you don't want any water, that's okay. Emily wants water. Okay. There we go, Emily. We can drink it. Sure, it's fresh out of the pot. If you don't want it, you don't have to. Okay, everybody's thirsty. No, not everybody. That's okay. You know what? We are learning. Number one, you didn't come up yourself. Right. You're welcome. Keep the cup. Okay, so 
I gave you some refreshment. I gave you some refreshing water. And our story today is about getting refreshment from God, from Jesus, turning to him for refreshment. And he tells us in the Bible, when you're thirsty, I give you water to refresh your bodies. And when your souls are thirsty, your heart, that means he's going to refresh your brain and your heart, your soul with his holy word, the Bible. Okay, so now do you feel a little bit better? Yeah, just refreshment. Okay. Water refreshes us, and we're told that God refreshes us in two ways. He provides water for our physical being and his holy word for our spiritual being. Another example is the 23rd Psalm. Now, does that sound familiar? I hope it does to most of you. We studied it in Sunday school. But that was a long time ago. So, I'm going to give you some activities after this to help you remember this. God tells us Okay, we're ready to say our prayer after me. Dear God, thank you so much for being the refreshment for us. We always know we can turn to you in times of need. We thank you again. Amen. Those were long Anyone else for water? Listen for the water if that comes from the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, we hear God's word read and proclaimed. Today's scriptures lesson comes from Psalm 42, 1 to 3, which names the alignment and Psalms 20 ailment and Psalms 23, which names the remedy. Listen for the word of the Lord. Just like a deer that craves the stream of water, my whole being craves you, God. My whole being thirsts for God, for the living God, when I will come and see God's face. My tears have been my food, both day and night, as people constantly question me, where's your God now? Psalm 23rd, 
a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Jan, did you need a glass of water? Okay, all right, good. I figured you could use a little refreshment after all the things you just did. All right, kids, go ahead, bust it open, get yourselves settled. If you need some crayons in the back row, you can come on up, grab some crayons if you want. That's cool. The rest of you, let's pray, shall we? We come to you today, God, and we are craving something. We don't know exactly what it is, but we know that our souls are weary, that something is not complete. While we do come to give you worship and praise, we have confessed there is something we hope to get out of this service, this experience as well. It is a weariness in our soul, a restlessness in our very being that seems to never be fully satisfied, that seems to never still. So we ask you today, God, please help us to gain the nourishment, the refreshment, the replenishment from your word, from the word that was written long ago to the word that was prepared fresh and new for this week. May we find in our souls refreshment in you. Through Jesus Christ, the people of faith pray, amen. It is a weary world, isn't it? So much is pulling on us, pulls at us in so many different directions, in so many different ways. We need refreshment. Amen? What do you find refreshing? He said, not rhetorically. That means I want an answer. A cool breeze. Donna, a glass of water. Oh, Mary, that's quite interesting. In the earlier service, someone particularly near to you said found cold beer to be refreshing. Will the Fife family please see me after church? Oh, not for a lecture. I want to know what they have to share. Others, we find refreshing. Vacation. Amen. Let's be clear, by the way, I'm not going on vacation this week. I'm going to teach at family camp and I'm bringing my daughters with me while my wife stays home. It is not a vacation week, friends. <laughs> Let's be clear. What else is refreshing? Swimming. Ah, yes. Swimming is refreshing. Sitting by the lake place. Lily? Ooh, that is refreshing, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Sitting in the water is refreshing, yes. Elizabeth? One, okay, we'll just say running through the sprinkler, parental edit, okay, good. Any kids, because I'm gonna look at the adults. Okay, Jane, go ahead. Yes, that is that is refreshing. Ooh, yeah, playing in the snow, getting in a warm blanket, watching Christmas movies, very refreshing. Yes, Byron. <laughs> you know, Byron, last week somebody said some things at the end of the service I got in trouble for. I don't know if I could repeat that one. 
but I do know that John, who has cold feet, is happy to celebrate that particular victory with you. Yeah, Jan. Air conditioning on a humid day, she said not ironically in a sanctuary with a broken air conditioner. Okay, very good. The things that are refreshing. I'm so, I'm so thankful. I'm so th a water balloon fight, says Teresa. Yes, it is refreshing. I'm so glad that none of you went right to, oh, God, or Jesus. Oh, I'm glad you did it. Because we spoke the truth. We spoke the truth of the way that we seek refreshment. I think, though, in our answers, it reveals one of the major reasons that we have trouble with actually attaining lasting, sustainable. Because so little of what we focus on is actually a long term solution to that need. We desire and we strive to have fun, exciting experiences, but not enough focus. Not enough practice is on refreshing, especially when we begin to talk about our souls. Now, we're beginning this sermon series here that focuses on refreshing our soul, and we're going to move outward from there. But today we begin with that inward part, that introspective part on refreshing, refreshing our soul. But before we can understand that, before we can achieve it, before we can receive the rest, we need to acknowledge something. We need to confess something together. We are saved. Yes. I believe that we, so many people, are soul thirsty and they don't even know it. Much of their time and their attention with things that they are trying to do to quench this thirst and it works. It never works because there is never enough of all those things that we seek out to refresh us. There's never enough of it because all of those solutions are not addressing the part of us that really needs to be refreshed. Imagine yourself Yourself being thirsty in the scenario that uh, Jan gave. Imagine yourself really being, and you cry out for some refreshment, and as thirsty as you are, somebody gives you crackers. Someone gives you something to eat. Now, watermelon notwithstanding, when we are thirsty, eating something doesn't quench our thirst, does it? It doesn't satisfy the part of us that is in need. I want you to listen to these words again from Psalm 42. Dust the deer craves streams of water. My whole being craves you, God. My whole being thirsts for God, the living God. When will I come and see God's face? My tears have been my food both day and night as people constantly question me. Where is your God? Very good. Two brilliantly names this thirst that I don't think we are in good enough, deep enough, intentional enough connection with. Our thirst is after God. It's after God's presence, seeing God's face, taste even something other than our own tears, our own disappointment, our own sadness. I think especially in the light of headlines this week, any week, still really being quite close to home in Highland Park. There was an assassination on the prime minister in Japan, Shinzo Abe. In case some of us forgot, there is still a war going on in Ukraine right now today. There's an upheaval and in the exchange of leadership in Sri Lanka. And let's be honest. We don't need to just look around the world. I'm sure, if I begin to have conversations with each and every one of you, if we were honest with each other, we would confess that there are parts of us that are so thirsty. We say, Where is God of ours now? Where are 
you now, God. That thirstiness is more physical, friends. It's something that is soulful, something that is spiritual. We need to be aware of that. Uh, Palestinian Naomi Shihab Nye wrote a book. In her book, let's just color. Thanks. In her book, she went about over the course of a year or so and noticed trash all around her. I love this concept. She would go to parks, she would go to uh, various festivals, things like that. And she would look at trash and in the way only a poet can. She would imagine the story behind that garden. The poem for today that I want to read to you is called World of the Future, Be Thirsted. And the image that she was looking at was much like this one. Various water, soda, juice bottles. She writes, stripped of a sense of well-being, we downed our water from small disposable bottles, casting the plastic to street side. We poured high potent energy time or Coca-Cola down our throats because this time history had sapped us so thoroughly and we were desperate. Straws, plastic cups, crushed cans in a three-block walk. You could fill a sack as if we could replenish our spirit. Pitching containers without remorse, who did we imagine would pick them up? What did we really know of plastic spirals in the sea bigger than whole countries? We had never swirled in one ourselves, as a fish might do, or a sea urchin, or a family of eels. Did we wish to be invincible, using what we wanted, discarding what we didn't, as in wars, whole cities and nations crumpled after our tanks and big guns pull out? How long does it take to be thirsty again? We were so lonely in the streets, though. All the small houses still had noses, mouths, eyes from which we might peer as our fellow citizens walk their dogs, pause helplessly as the dogs circle trees, tip their heads back for a long, slow slug of water or tea, and never fear, never fear. Take a moment. And think, feel, feel aware of with yourself. Where does that phrase from Psalm 42 resonate with you? My whole being thirsts for the living God. Lean that thirst. Don't shy away from it. Don't just have a cursory acknowledgement of its presence. Feel the full depth of your thirst. Is your throat drying up just a little bit? Do you feel your shoulders sagging under the weight of what you know you are pushing down, pushing back, trying not to think about? Good. I want you to be thirsty. I want you to know just how thirsty you are. I am thankful. I am grateful that you have come here thirsty and that you are willing to admit that to yourself. Know about it. So, Adam, we're thirsty. What do we do now? We find refreshment. We need to train ourselves. We need to delve deeply into spiritual practice for both ourselves and the ability to share and make others aware of it as well. We need to focus on both of these types of moments. We need to know how thirsty we are. If not, how can we appreciate God's souling refreshment? We need to recognize that thirst, be aware of it, embrace it, so that we can have our soul thirst by the Almighty God, the living God. You see, God offers us so many opportunities, so many resources to have our thirst quenched. We blow past them because we're not paying attention. This picture is from, gosh, four years ago now, from the last time I was able to go to Sisseton, South Dakota, 
sponsored by this church in partnership with others who volunteer to go there to teach vacation Bible school to the Dakota people on the reservation there. These are the kids that were in my van. Um, some of them were assigned to my van. Others were stragglers that were hanging out at the end of the day. And yeah, I do. I'll talk to you about it after church. It's a 15 passenger van I rented to prize. It's kind of cool. We, technically speaking, fit more than 15 kids in our van from time to time occasionally. Um, on this particular week, uh, the two kids in the black shirts and the kid in the green shirt uh, kept behind at the end of the week and they needed a ride home because they lived in town. A lot of the town kids walk. It was pretty hot there. You know, it's a far walk a mile and a half for three young kids to walk. So I made room in my van for them to ride with us. They never said thank you. They never even really smiled or engaged in the shenanigans. The other kids knew what they were getting into when they got into the van with A train and the professor and they knew the exciting Mr. Toad's wild ride that they were about to experience. But these kids were kind of quiet off to themselves. I just thought they're just trying to get to ride, man, just take them. You never know what God's gonna do. Last day of the uh, vacation Bible school, for whatever reason it was so hot and the kids were all so thirsty. They got in the van like A train, can't you stop at the supermarket and get us Gatorade man? You got enough you could buy us all Gatorade. I'm like there's like 27 of you. <laughs> I'm not buying Gatorade for all y'all. I said 27, I meant 15. These three kids that have said nothing else all week long said, we got a hose. When you stop at our house, a train, everybody can get out and get a drink. And I took this picture because I just knew somehow God was going to use it as an illustration for quenching thirst community for something. It was just such a moment. Because here were these kids that never really talked, off to themselves, da da da, and all that it took was someone to say, "Man, I'm so thirsty. We have water." I didn't drink from hose, but man, my soul is quenched in this moment. Think about your week now. Reflect back on your week. Were there moments where you saw, where you experienced an opportunity to receive soul quenching? Were there moments where you actually embraced it? And you reflect on the week as you look back. Was there a moment where there could have been a take and so you could have remembered as God was offering you this soul quenching refreshment that you were seeking something else besides that? Or you were so zeroed in on on your thirst, you couldn't imagine receiving soul wrenching at that moment. See, this is the mystery of how God works in our lives. We don't see all those opportunities, or we don't recognize how quenched our souls were when those moments come along because we are after fleeting things. We want to, when God offers us a river of living life. It's tempting for us to focus on how our soul behaves like the deer panting at the stream. It's tempting for us to only hear that question, where is your God now? But my friends, I have a word for us. I have a word for the 21st century and it comes in these refreshing words. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk the darkest valley, I fear no evil. Listen, listen. For you are with me. You hear the change? Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint the head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This kid's got to come every week. He's clapping for the scripture. I love it. The verse 
the passage starts off the Lord, the Lord, that far away God, right? You know, the white guy with the big long beard is like 100 years old. And somewhere in the middle, it changes to the second person plural, the familiar you. Did you hear where it changed, though? It changed at the part that most of us would want to push out a little further away. That rod and staff, that discipline, that obedience, that drawing us in. That's where David understands God is closest to me. At that moment where I want to push God away, that's when I'm going to lean in, says David. Adulterer, sinner, guy that did a lot of bad stuff. He understood what it was like to walk in the dark valley. His good friend Saul sought him out to kill him, betrayed him, not just once. As a young boy, he had killed bears and lions, giants, and the whole rest of the army. We don't want none of that. And he battled demons inside, too. And he provides for us a vision so bold that God says, come here, sit down. Right across from you is your enemy. And I prepare a feast not for you to gorge yourself in front of mine with them. So abundant is my love and mercy, says God. You can sit down at this table with this enemy of yours and eat. Now, when we hear that enemy phrase, we like to think about personification. I know, Dave, you're thinking about that kid back in high school, the one that put you in your locker. I know. That's not the only enemy that sits down at this table with us, though. It's not just the person's Putin. What about the enemy of poverty? What about the enemy of racism? What about the enemy of hatred? We can sit down at the table across from those entities, those spiritual enemies, and there too, God pours a cup that is overflowing. Says your soul will be refreshed in the presence of those enemies too. You're going to know life, and you're going to know love, and you're going to know the eternity of those things. God is telling us, where and have our souls refreshed? We have to listen. We have to listen and receive it because it's offered more and more than we realize. So over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to practice this. We're going to walk through that valley where we're thirsty and the shadow of death more than looms. It engulfs us. We're going to find in God's word refreshment for our souls, for our bodies, for our community. Psalm 197 is the Lord's instruction, in reviving one's very being. The Lord's laws are faithful, making naive people wise. Proverbs 15.30 says, The light of the eyes rejoice the heart, and good news refreshes the body. What better news than this? Psalm 23 juxtaposed with Psalm 42, that we are so thirsty, and God provides refreshment. What eyes are brighter than those that I see here today, illuminated by the Holy Spirit and shining as bright as the light that Jesus claimed us to be? The world can be a barren, dry, 